The high-velocity aircraft rocket, or Havar, also known by the nickname Holy Moses, was an American unguided rocket developed during World War II to attack targets on the ground from aircraft. It saw extensive use during both World War II and the Korean War. Topic: <laughs> Design and Development. The Havar was designed by engineers at Caltech during World War II as an improvement on the 5-inch forward-firing aircraft rocket FFAR, which had a 5 inches centimeters diameter warhead but an underpowered 3.25 inches centimeters diameter rocket motor. The desire for improved accuracy from the flatter trajectory of a faster rocket spurred the rapid development. Havar had a constant 5 diameter for both warhead and rocket motor, increasing propellant from 8.5 to 23.9 pounds, 3.9 to 10.8 kilograms of ballastite. U.S. ballastite propellant had a sea level specific impulse of over 200 seconds, compared with about 180 seconds for the British cordite, German WASAG, and Soviet PTP propellants. Hercules Powder Company was the principal U.S. supplier of high performance extruded ballastite propellants, 51.5% nitrocellulose, 43% nitroglycerine, 3.25% diethyl phthalate, 1.25% potassium sulfate, 1% ethyl centralite, and 0.2% carbon black. The propellant in US 3.25 and 5 rocket motors consisted of a single large X-shaped cross section, cruciform, ballastite grain cavity. This went against the common practice of filling rocket motors with different numbers of smaller same-sized tubular charges with a round cavity, the number depending on motor diameter. The central hole in a tubular charge makes it more difficult to extrude, requiring a softer propellant blend that also yields somewhat lower performance. Rocket increment V increased from 216 meters per second for the 5 inches. R to 420 meters per second, 1400 feet per second for Havar, giving the coveted flat trajectory. Topic. Operational service Two different versions of the Havar were built during World War II, the warheads were Mk-4 general purpose warheads holding 7.6 pounds of TNT with base and optionally nose fuses, or Mk. Two AP warheads with 2.2 pounds of explosive D. Havar testing was complete by D Day, 6 June 1944, and airlifted Navy Havar rockets were soon being loaded on 9th Air Force Republic P 47D Thunderbolts to support the breakout at Normandy. Other single-engine delivery aircraft included the Vought F-4U Corsair, Grumman F-6F Hellcat, Grumman TBF, TBM Avenger, and Curtis SB-2C Helldiver. Twin-engine aircraft sometimes armed with HVARs included the Lockheed P-38 Lightning, North American PBJ Mitchell Bomber and the Lockheed PV-2 Harpoon Bomber. Havar could penetrate four feet of reinforced concrete and was used to sink transports, knock out pillboxes and AA gun emplacements, blow up ammo and oil storage dumps, and destroy tanks, locomotives, and bunkers. Navy F-4U Corsairs and TBF, TBM Avengers made the most extensive use of the rockets in the Pacific theater after the victory in Europe. Over a million HVARs were made during World War II, and production continued until 1955. 
HVARs remained in the Navy's inventory until the mid-1960s. After World War II, newer versions included a new general purpose type with a proximity fuse, white phosphorus smoke rounds, an anti-submarine head, and a new shaped charge warhead for use against tanks. The 6.5-inch ram rocket was an oversized shaped charge head on a standard Havar motor as well. Havar was an effective weapon in the hands of skilled, experienced pilots. It was less effective in the hands of average or inexperienced pilots who were accustomed to taking less careful aim and then walking in their gunfire to finally engage a target. HVARs could be fired in pairs or a single rapid fire salvo but required accurate initial alignment and careful attention to range, or at least a good instinctive sense for the range to the target. HVARs were widely used in the Korean War. Douglas AD-1 Skyriders often carried a dozen HVARs, and sometimes an additional pair of much larger but less accurate tiny TIM 11.75-inch rockets. Targets included ships, bunkers, pillboxes, coastal defense guns, ammunition dumps, and occasionally even destroyers and major bridges. Numerous North American F-51D Mustang six shooters, 6.50 cal machine guns plus six HVARs and two bombs or ten HVARs and carrier-based Grumman F-9F Panther jets flew close air support in Korea. Panthers carried six HVARs and four 20mm cannons, while both planes could carry an additional pair of 500 pounds bombs, napalm, or fuel tanks. Neil Armstrong and John Glenn were among the Panther pilots. It was in Korea that HVARs and Tiny Tims bridged the gap between prop planes and jets. Lockheed F 80C Shooting Star, Republic F 84E Thunderjet, Grumman F 9F Panther, and North American F 86 Sabre. Jets gave the fighter pilots improved forward visibility. F 84E Thunderjets proved to be the most capable load lifting fighter. Bombers in Korea, demonstrating an ability to loft up to 24 HVARs and two tiny TIMs with a combined rocket weight of 5,800 pounds. In April 1945, Havar rockets were used in Operation Bumblebee in the Navy's facility on Island Beach, New Jersey. The Havar rockets launched 6-inch ramjet engines from wooden frames, accelerating the carbon disulfide fuel ramjets to flight speed. On June 13, the ramjets achieved supersonic speed. Havar rockets were used in the 1970s, the Mk. 32 heat round being used by Air Force A1E Skyriders in Vietnam. Topic: Warheads. Initial WW2 Havar warheads were modified 5, 38 caliber gun shells, with the Mk.6 head being a modification of AA common shells and the Mk.2 being derived from special common rounds. Later heads were purpose built. The Mark VI He head came in two variations, Mod 0 and Mod 1. Mod 1 had a deep nose cavity to fit the M403 VT fuse and thus carried 0.5 pounds less explosive fill. Ammunition <inaudible> 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 A head assembled with a motor is known by a separate designation listed below. Topic: Performance. Topic: TDU-11 B target rocket. 
Some surviving Havar rockets were converted to training targets for pilots to practice firing AIM-9 Sidewinder infrared-guided missiles. Heavier than the base rocket at about 215 pounds, the TDU-11B used a MK.6 head with inert lead ballast and was fitted with four tracking flares on the rear to provide a strong IR signature for the Sidewinder to lock onto. Carried paired with AIM-9s on AER-03B launchers, a pilot would fire the TBU-11B, then switch to his sidewinder, wait for it to acquire the tracking flares, and fire. TDU-11Bs were used into the 1980s by the United States and Australian militaries. Topic. See also. 3. 5-inch forward-firing aircraft rocket Bore rocket XASMN-6 Notes <laughs> <laughs>